got my PVA bag almost all the way on. And same old deal, you want to get your bag on there as far as you can so it's nice and snug at the top as much as you can. And not all legs match up great with all locks. Sometimes you get a lot of puckering and bagging up here. If that's the case, just keep a little more tension when you go to introduce your resin and get things strung out really nice. And then when you're done, get that tension back on there and possibly tape off that top area, get all those extra bagginess out of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and powder my bag down, get rid of that moisture and toughen it up a little. There's a lot of different ways of putting a PVA bag on. This is the way I was shown. It works for me, so I stick with it. All right, now let's check our vacuum, make sure we're in good shape before we go mixing our resin up. Yep, plenty. So here's something on vacuum that we've been discussing a lot, and that is on the epoxies, we've been leaving our vacuum system set in the plus 20 range, 20, 22, 24. And using acrylics, modified acrylics, we've been knocking it down to below 20 to 15, just to make sure we don't starve ourselves out with too much vacuum. And with this leg and the way it's laid up, I would think 15 pounds would be more than adequate to draw the resin in on this leg. Okay, I just checked my vacuum. I just dropped it down to right around 15 pounds. Still got plenty of draw. Wonderful. That'll just keep us from pulling all that thinner resin out of this layup. Let's mix this up some juice. Let's see, what would that leg take? A couple hundred? All right, I got, I'm gonna say 250 in resin there. All right, go just about three on the dot percent. That'd be plenty warm enough. You're all mixed up nice. This size leg and this layup, 250 should be fine. It's always a bit of a guessing game. Okay, that looks good. And that was mixed plenty warm, so this should set off in ample time. Open my vacuum back up. Get my bag sealed off. Okay, with the thinner resins, you can start introducing your resin much faster. When you start messing around with your epoxies, you want to do exactly what they tell you in the directions, and you take your time on this top end of your socket. It's where you have the largest amount of braid, and everything is thicker. You're going to have more undercuts. You want to give that thicker resin, plenty of time to saturate in. What'll happen if you get too fast at introducing an epoxy resin, you start getting air pockets because you're, you're hitting it so quick, it goes around it and you'll leave a pocket somewhere inside of this layup and it'll, it'll leave you air and it won't show up till you're almost done. With the, with the modified acrylics, you pretty much get right after it. It's still a good rule of thumb, though, to not get real carried away your beginning stage of your layup. Let that get good and saturated. And once you feel comfortable that all your layers are soaked down good, then you take off and run the race down the whole side. Yeah, it feels really good up around there. And the bag's drawing it in really nice. It's a nice shaped limb for this lock matches up really well. This is where that tying it off around the base of that lock comes in and get rid of a lot of that bridging and heavy weight right there. It's not something that has to be done, but on your finished product, it can make it look a lot nicer. Now this is also another place where the vacuum 
and become kind of critical. You don't want a huge draw of vacuum. If I was doing someone larger, a big AK or something more complicated, a KFO, I'd probably keep my vacuum pressure up till I was just about done and then I'd back it off a little. As you can see the difference when it's getting introduced. Down in here you have the real heavy check pattern. As you come up into the thicker part of the resin, it's much smoother, smoother and fully saturated. That's telling me I need to keep introducing down here. This is definitely starved out. Right through here, a little bit. Right through there is still doable. And in from here up, 100% good coverage. A lot of it's just, just by look and feel. This isn't carbon, you're not gonna get that same look. And that's a good way to tell if you're starved or not. If that's looking like a super great carbon finished look, you don't have enough resin. Okay, another little tidbit for people that are having trouble with their ears starving out. If you noticed, I'm not stringing that over the edge. I'm coming down so far and I'm stopping. I'm trying to keep that last little bit right there. We got lots of time to get rid of this, that heavy edge. There's no reason to go clear to the end and flip the resin over the edge, at least not yet. This also depends on how hot you've mixed your resin. Yeah, that feels nice. Let's go ahead and tie the top off. And then let's take our tape and tape off our lock and get rid of any excess resin we have. And then we'll string it down to the bottom. And this stuff should be setting off pretty quick and we'll be done. Same old deal, you're running tape around this. You want to make sure you're nice and flat. Keep from wrinkling it. <laughs> kind of help push some of the resin out from underneath there so we don't have all that thick stuff we don't need. We're not going to get a whole lot out of this. There's our undercut right there. I'm going to go one more time underneath of that. There's that undercut we were trying to Make sure we don't have air in or extra resin buildup. Now that little step right there can find you another 20 grams of resin without any trouble at all. Okay. Now we'll run this thing down closer to the end. And I'm pushing pretty good using a parachute cord to string with. One thought we've had in stringing if guys are getting it dried out too easy and they're actually using a string was to maybe change and go to say a vacuum nylon to string their lamination with so they weren't so aggressively pushing into the resin and drying out the basalt braid. Now you can see that pattern we were talking about right through here, much less aggressive looking. And as any lamination, you still have more up here than you do down here, but this is a good layer of resin over the composite. It has a nice feel to it. It's not real aggressive, but yet you can feel that there's a product in there still. And I know we're not gonna dry out with this. It'll look just fine. It still take some more away from the top. And I'm pushing pretty good with this parachute cord. I want to get this dude down there to where he has just what he needs. I don't want a bunch of extra bulk resin that we don't need. A bunch of garbage waste that doesn't help him out. All right, that's looking really nice. Well, the other thing I haven't mentioned is notice the color 
of the basalt when you introduce it to resin. I've added no pigment. That is straight modified acrylic. That's all it is. And you can see how that's turned that almost black. It is really close to a solid black color. Once this is finished curing and dries out, you take it in the sun and it has what I like to call a black brown hue to it. It doesn't look 100% black, but you can see just a little bit of brown, like the gold of the braid finishing up in it. I mean, we went from something that bright and gold colored to when it's wet, it's almost black. So I call it a brown black. And I'm going to give it a little bit of heat. Get this thing going because I'd like to cut it off today and finish our video. I don't know about you guys, but you probably have work to do in the lab instead of watching videos. <laughs> okay, that was my little joke for the day. I'm going to stay up here on the top area where it's the thickest. And if I think I still got too much up there and you have time to work your resin, warm it up a little bit, string it again, run it down there toward your, your, your distal end in this application, or proximal, you know, if you're wearing it. Warm that up a little bit. You'll still be able to get some more resin out of there. Just a little bit. I'm going to give it one last little go by because it feels really good. It hasn't quite started flashing off. I didn't mix it that hot. I certainly could have or we'd be done by now. Yeah, that's feeling nice. A little wrinkle. That feels real nice right there. It's got a nice appearance to it. You can string this out to where you just see that pattern, but if you're seeing it real aggressive, then you are absolutely thin. That's just the nature of the beast. The composite, the coat composite takes on the resin. It is part of it. It is, it is saturated with it. It's not a carbon where the resin just suspends around it. This actually does this. And that's why your braiding isn't aggressive looking like a carbon. It's doing that and it's just all coming together. It's saturating the fibers so it flattens the fibers out and doesn't make them look like individual strands. I guess it'd be a little better way of explaining it. The more that cures and cooks in, the more of the pattern is starting to show up throughout the whole leg. And this lateral side over here, you can't see right now. We'll show it to you when we cut it off. Got a real nice even pattern to it. And what I mean by even is it doesn't look like it's super thick in the top layers, uh, uh, the distal end versus the proximal brim edge. It has a real nice look all the way through it. The patterning is very, very similar from here to here. It's definitely looking like it's a nice even layup. Nice even, uh, um, what do you want to call it, uh, stringing so the resin isn't overly thick here and it's not overly thin there. It's very consistent. You get over here and you can really see the pattern from here all the way down. See how that looks? It has a very similar look to it. It doesn't look like one's solid and one's super braided. It has a real consistent look to it. That's what I was talking about. So my resin thickness is really to me, nice all the way through. It's not overly heavy, it's not under. It's just nice all the way down it. Nice and consistent. So our resin's starting to set up. I can feel it's getting good and hot. I mean, it's so hot you can't touch it up here. I know some guys have a real problem with this taping off around a lock because they don't want their bag to wrinkle. To me, if, if it is so small, say with the, the, the small airlock, it is so small it's hard to do this application, but you just have to bring your bag up and try to get that tension out. And if you have to, hold the bag and move it. But if you lay your tape on and you pay attention to what you're doing, you can get a real nice taping on this without showing tape lines in it and wrinkling of the bag. Another thing I've done, if, I'm, if I think I'm gonna get tape lines in this, if I'm worried about the lines of any tape showing up, when this thing is getting hot and it's setting up that this tape at this temperature 
and it's hard to where you, you still touch it with your fingernail, but it's, it's hard at setting. Go through here and just carefully take this off right now before it's 100% cooked. This thing is nice and warm. I want to get rid of just that. And I'm going to leave that very last piece. Now, when this is all done, it's not going to pull away from it because it's set up enough, but yet it's not so hot that it's cooking those lines where I taped around it in a circle into my finish. So when we're done, we pull the bag off, we'll take a look at this and see if we see tape lines around the top of this, or the distal of this lock. And I almost guarantee you, you won't even be able to tell that I've taped it. But you will be able to tell that this is drawn in as tight as I can get it and got all that excess resin out of this lock area.